Hi all, welcome back to Guitar Lessons Live and our beginner course one, lesson three. In this video, we're going to learn how to play the remaining major and minor chords, mainly F major and F minor, as well as B major and B minor. But then we are also going to look at how we can move these shapes around in order to play any chord we like. So say, for example, I need to play the chord A flat major, but I don't know it. Well, what we can do is we can take our F major shape and just move it up and down the fretboard into the right position so that we are now playing A flat major. So I can use my knowledge of the chromatic scale to go F, F sharp, G, G sharp, which I also know that G sharp is equivalent to A flat, which check the previous lesson. And then if I know that this is A flat, I can just play the exact same shape and get the chord that I need. Right, you ready? Let's play. All right, so we're going to take a look at F major first, and we're going to play this shape, which you can see here. So for this shape, again, I'm leaving the sixth string muted. Then I'm going to take my ring finger and put it on the fifth string third fret. And we know this note very well. This is our good friend C. Again, I'm going to be sliding my pinky right underneath to play the fourth string third fret. And this is the note F. Then I'm going to take my second finger, put it on the third string second fret. And this is the note A. And finally, I'm going to take my first finger and put it on the second string first fret. And this is the note C. We're also not going to be playing the top E string. So let's hear that all together. Now, one of the interesting things about this F major chord is that actually we don't have to mute this first string, this high E string. We can actually leave that ringing out in order to get a slightly different color to the sound. And for those of you who know a little bit of music theory, what that would involve is going from an F major chord to an F major seven chord. So if I just play our F major first, and now compare this color and this sound to when I play it again, but now with the highest string ringing out. So you notice the sound becomes a lot more sparkly and a lot more colorful. So again, comparing the two, we have F versus F major seven. Mm, very nice. And what you can do more broadly is we can take this exact same F shape and slide it up and down the neck and then also let the highest string ring out and see how it changes the color of the sound. So for example, if instead of F, I just move up two frets to G, just the normal G major chord, but if I now also let the E string ring out, we get this sound. Which sounds very cool. Now, of course, this isn't going to work for all chords. So if I was to take an A flat major chord instead, so going from G and other half step up to A flat and let the E string ring out, I'd get... Ooh, oh, no, no, no. So what I would say to you is play around with this a little bit, move the shape up and down and just explore the sounds that you get. You know, just playing F major with the E string, G major with the E string, maybe A major with the, A, with the E string and just really explore the colors. Cool. And just one final thing on this F major chord, which is that we can actually play a slightly more difficult shape if we don't want to be playing the open E string or be worried about muting. And it's actually going to be this one. So what you'll notice is that it's the exact same shape, except now I'm just doing this little bow with my first finger across the top two strings. And essentially what we are doing there is we are adding the first string, first fret, and the note is F. So all together we will be playing this shape with the little bar. Now that is a little bit harder. And again, if you can't do this one, feel free just to stick to our standard F right there. Next up, we have F minor, and you'll notice that we are playing the exact same shape as we did for G minor in the previous lesson. So previously we had on the third fret, our G minor, 
And what we are going to do is we're just going to move it down two frets so that now we're playing F instead of G. All right, let's check it out. For this chord, again, we're going to be muting the sixth string. Then we're going to take our third finger and put it on the fifth string third fret. And once again, you'll know that this is our good friend, the C note. Then you're going to slide your pinky underneath and play the fourth string third fret and the note is F. And then for our little bar across these top three strings, we're going to start by playing the third string th first fret. And you'll know that this note we were referring to as G sharp. However, in the context of this F minor chord, I'm now going to be calling it A flat. So we have A flat. Then we're going to play the second string first fret. And this is the note C. And finally, we're going to play the first string first fret. And this is the note F. So all together we have RF minor chord. If you're struggling with some of these shapes, don't worry, take your time, learn it slowly. I promise you it's going to come. Moving right along to B major, we're going to be playing this shape. And I think there is a key thing to address with these shapes, and that is that we are eventually going to be taking all four of them and turning them into bar chords. So what we want to do is get to a point where we are taking these exact same shapes and just laying our index finger across in order to also play this bass note. So in this case, it would be a B note. So our index finger will be playing the bass note of the chord as well as the highest notes of the chord. So that's one for the future, but for now, we're just going to be playing our B major like this. And what that is, is I'm once again muting the sixth string as well as the fifth string. Then I'm taking my second finger and I'm putting it on the fourth string, fourth fret. And this is the note F sharp. Then I'm going to take my ring finger, tuck it underneath and play the third string, fourth fret. This is the note B. Then I'm going to take my fourth finger, slide it underneath that and play the second string, fourth fret. And this is the note D sharp. Previously, we were calling it E flat, but again, within the context of a B major chord, it's going to be D sharp. And finally, I'm taking my first finger and I'm putting it on the first string, second fret. And this is the note F sharp. So all together, we're going to have our B major chord. And last, but certainly not least, we're going to take a look at the B minor chord. Again, we have already seen this shape when we were playing C minor in the previous lesson. And so all we're going to do is going to take our C minor shape and we're just going to slide it back down one fret. So that now instead of C minor, we're going to be playing B minor. So you're all familiar with the game by now. Sixth string and the fifth string both muted. Then we're going to take our third finger and we're going to be putting it on the fourth string, fourth fret. And as we've just discussed, this is the note F sharp. Then you're going to tuck your pinky underneath on the third string, fourth fret. This is the note B. Then we're going to take our second finger and we're going to be putting it on the second string, third fret. And this is the note D. And finally, we're going to take our first finger and we're going to put it on the first string, second fret. And this is the note F sharp. So all together. our B minor chord. The great thing about these shapes is that they are movable across the guitar neck. So this is where we can use our knowledge of the chromatic scale to help us out. Say for example, I need to play the chord B flat major. Well, what I can do is just take my B major shape and then like King Julian from Madagascar, I'm going to move it, move it down one fret. And I get my B flat major chord. This is really powerful. So make sure you keep this concept in mind and make sure you practice it. So what you could do is let's take the F major shape and just move it up and down the fretboard while being aware of the chord you're playing. So let's say I move it up a half step. Now I'm playing F sharp major. If I move it up another half step, now I'm playing G major and so on and so forth. All right, let's dive into some exercises. 
For exercise one, we're just going to be taking our four shapes and using them to play two different progressions in time. And of course, the progressions we're going to play are not random, but instead they come from the major scale, which we'll take a little look at later on in the course. The first progression we're going to play is going to be C major, G major, then we're going to slide down two frets to A minor, and we're going to finish off by playing F major. And then repeat the loop. And for the second progression, we're going to start on B minor. Then we're going to play G major again. Then we're going to jump down and play D major. And finally, we're going to finish on A major. And then back to the start with B minor. All right. So we're going to start with progression one. I've got the metronome set up at 50 beats per minute. And three, four, and C major. And G major. And A minor. And F major. Maybe the open string. And C major. G major and A minor and F major Good stuff. Now let's do the second progression. So 50 beats per minute and 3, 4 and B minor 2 and three and four and G major three and four and D major two and three and four and A major two and three and four and B minor and G major and D major Now, exercise two is going to be a little bit different from what we have done so far. And what it will involve is we're going to try to play the chords we have learned while putting as little pressure on the strings as possible. So it's all about becoming aware of just how little pressure it takes to get a note to ring out. And I know a lot of you feel like you have to really grip the fretboard as if your life depended on it just to get some notes to ring out. But what we're going to discover is that actually you can get the notes to ring without much pressure at all. And this will help you with your chords going forward as well as with your chord changes. So check it out. If I take my ring finger and try to play our good friend the C note, which you'll know is the fifth string third fret right here, what I can do is I can just lay my finger on the string and then start to apply pressure gradually to see just how little it takes to get the note to ring. So I'll start here with no pressure at all and you'll notice that the string is just dead, we're not playing anything. Then I put a bit more pressure. Still nothing, a little bit more. Oh, maybe, and then a little bit more. Ah, and already I'm getting the note to ring without having to really press my finger hard against the fretboard. All right, so now let's do the exercise with some chords. To start with, I'm just going to take our G major chord and I'm not going to do the more difficult shape. I'm just going to do the open chord we learned in the very first lesson. So it's going to be this shape. And then I'm going to take my second finger and just start to play the note while applying more and more pressure gradually. Once I get that to ring, I then take my first finger and go on to the next note. There we go. Then the next two strings I just played open. Then I take my third finger and I try to get the second string to ring and there we go. And finally I take my pinky and there I'm already getting a note. And to finish up, I'm going to do all fingers all together. with very little pressure I can get the notes to ring out very cleanly. Let's repeat with the D minor chord. 
So again, I'm just going to be using our open D minor shape. And again, just start off by applying no pressure. And then by putting slightly more pressure, I can already get the notes ring out. So now let's take my ring finger and continue. And finally, my first finger. And then the notes all together in one chord. Cool. So for the second exercise, just pick out a bunch of chords we've learned so far and repeat. So I can take, you know, A minor, I can take E major, or if you're feeling really ambitious, try one of our movable shapes. So maybe F major, but the slightly harder shape. Play it one note at a time, get them to ring, and then all together. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next lesson where we take a look at the major scale. Stay tuned.